Hey you guys, it's Bree. Today I am over here on the south side of my house. This is where my master bedroom is. And then I have this flower bed right here, which if you've been following along with me, you saw that I planted a bunch of gladiolas in this bed. And I don't know, they bloomed, but if you look at them, well, let me turn you around and show you what happened to them. They got severely eaten by grasshoppers. Every single one of them. Now I did have a few blooms on them, but I mean, this does not look pretty at all whatsoever. And then there's a bunch of weeds down in there. Now the mums, you can see the mums have buds all over them. There's those two mums right there. And then there's this one. And then there's that one over there. The ones on this side are underneath this. So I'm assuming they're just shaded and that's why those ones aren't very big. But these ones are pretty big. So this is the bed that I'm gonna be working on this evening. What I want to do is go ahead and pull all the glads out. Now, I want to keep the glads, but I will not be planting them here next time. I'm going to plant them in like a big group somewhere else. So, I'm going to pull all these out, and then I have my harvest basket here. So, I'm going to pull them out, and then I'm just going to let them completely dry up. And that way I can actually take the tops off and store them. So let me show you. So, these ones right here that the tops are already dead. Those ones are good enough to, for me to go ahead and take out and let's see here. So I can take this out and then just lay this in my basket and let that completely dry. Now the ones that are green still, I can probably pull the bulb up attached to it, yeah. So there's that and you can see it's actually starting to multiply you can see that little baby one over there and then there's a little baby one right there but this is too wet for me to take the top off so i'm just gonna let it dry until the top completely dies so i'm gonna do that same thing with all of these and while i'm in there i'm also going to pull out all these weeds too
Jesus Christ. Whew, perfect timing. Husband, can you get this grasshopper out of here? I just almost had a heart attack. right there. You see him? In the loop. You need to get him completely out. Mm, go. <laughs> there he goes. Step on him. Thanks. Love you. Love you. Are you going in? Yeah. Oh, okay. So now I have all my corms out of here and some of them have actually doubled so that's pretty exciting but most of them doesn't really look like they did much but that's okay. So what I also did is I had a echinacea and two salvias. I had the big echinacea in the middle and the two salvias on each side. Those all died so that was before we had our drip irrigation in so I think that's probably the reason why they died but so I went ahead and pulled those out too. So now all I'm left with are those moms, but I already have stuff that I'm going to be putting in them. So let me go ahead and turn y'all around and show you what we picked up today. I picked up an entire gorilla cart load full of irises. So we have a whole bunch in here and I mean we got all different sizes too. We have some that have really big rhizomes on them. And then we have some little tiny baby ones that are just starting. And I mean, look at this. There is just so many of them in here. So this is what I'm going to be putting in this bed right here, along with many other areas in my garden. So my plan is to put some of these, of course, in my iris bed. And if you've been following along, you know that was kind of a fail. Some of them are still doing really, really good, but considering how many I put in there, most of them are completely dead and not doing anything. So I plan on putting a bunch of these over there in the iris bed. And then I also want to put some in what was supposed to be my magical dahlia wall. I want to put a bunch of them in there. And then I do have the two beds next to the chicken coop that actually already have irises in them. But the two nightlight bushes that were in the center of each of those completely died. So why not just completely fill them with irises? As you can see, I have plenty of irises to do that. I don't even know how many irises that is, but that's got to be hundreds. Because I know when my sister and I went, we just got that box full. I think we had like 140 of them at that, at that time. So a complete gorilla cart full, there's got to be several hundred in there. So the guy said there's a mixture of purple, white, and yellow, which is ironically the exact same colors that I already have the most of anyways. Now, none of my yellow ones bloomed, unfortunately. So fingers crossed, they're still alive, but I just didn't get blooms this year. So I'm hoping that we can actually get some blooms next year. But the purple and the white ones, they already bloomed and they were beautiful earlier this year. So who knows what color I'll have, but I'm fine with purple, white, and yellow. So that'll be really, really nice. So what I'm thinking about doing, because obviously the mums on the right side, I'm assuming they're not getting enough sun, but I was wondering if I should relocate all of them to the middle of the bed. I don't know. And then just put, that, put the irises all in the back. Now, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, that may shock the plant. I'm hoping it won't too much. You know, these are ones that I planted last fall, and they've survived, and they're getting ready to bloom. So, it might be a bad idea to move them, but I am going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm seriously going to probably fill the whole rest of the bed. Just completely fill it with irises. So, let's get to it.
So I want to show y'all. So we have this one right here, the single by itself. So that one is good to plant. Then we have this weird funky one. So this was the original rhizome. This is one of the new ones that it sent out along with this one and this one. So this one is spent and it's not going to give me flowers. So I'm going to pop this off. That one's good to plant now. I'm even going to pop this one off. This one's good to plant on its own. And then I'm also going to take this one off. And this one's going to be good to plant. This thing right here is not going to do anything for me. So it's going to go in the trash. So because there's so many of them, I'm going to go ahead and just pick through the ones that I want to plant in here. And then I am actually going to cut the tops off as well. Not all the way. I'll show you that when I get ready to do that. But first, I'm going to go ahead and just separate a bunch of these. And I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I got all the ones out. I got them separated. I pulled off all the old rhizomes. And I tried to use rhizomes that were a little bit bigger. Just so that I felt like they had a better chance of surviving. So it may sound like too many. And we'll see. Once I get them cut and laid out, we'll see. But I have 50 of them right here. So let's turn around and look at them. So I have 25 over here on this side. And I have 25 over here on this side. And you can see these have fantastic roots on them. They look really, really nice. So now what I got to do is cut down the tops. So let me show you what we're going to do. So I'm just going to use my little bitty cutters that I got at Home Depot. Okay. So I have it right here and I'm just going to cut just like that. And now I'm going to do that with all 50 of them. take too long to do those. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the other 25 and I'll be back in just a minute. So I ended up not using all 50 of them. I was able to space out about 34 of them and I'm happy with that spacing. They're not gonna stay here forever but I feel confident that they'll do okay for at least a while in this bed being this close. So now the fun part now to get all of these planted. So that's the idea that I'm going for. This first line right here, try to get all the roots under there and then leave the top of the rhizomes sticking out a little bit. And that's it. So now I got 30 more to go. Well, I got them all planted. They look pretty cool in there and there's quite a few in there. So I did pretty good for the most part, making sure that the tops were sticking up and making sure all the roots were underneath the ground. Um, once I watered in them, I had to make some adjustments on there, but I'm pretty happy with it. Let me turn you all around and show you what it looks like. So I got them all lined up there. Now, once they grow and get nice and full, it'll basically just be like a solid bed of iris leaves. So I know they look like they're almost perfectly spaced out, but once they fill in, I don't think you'll be able to even notice that. But like you can see, this one up in the front has a little bit more of the rhizome sticking out than the one next to it, but just uncover that a little bit and make sure it's settled in there. And then that one's good. But yeah, like I said, once I water them in, I'm only gonna, well, actually to be honest, I probably won't water them in. You can see I made a huge mess down here. But I'm probably not going to water them in because they are pretty, or the dirt is pretty wet down in there. You can see the darker spots. Now in the back corner, it's not as wet. But I do have this drip system right here. It's actually on right now because my son just turned it on. But I'm probably going to just wrap that around, mostly around the mums because the moms are what needs a lot of water. So I'm going to get this all looped back in here and then I'll show you what it looks like. 
our drip line comes in from that brown tube in the back over there and then it comes up and to be honest the irises don't need it to be watered that much or so i was told by there's a person over here close to us that has literally a thousand irises in his front in his front yard that's what he does for a living is grows irises so he said he doesn't water them unless they're looking droopy so because of the time of the year i don't think they're going to need much water but it, they will get some water from that drip line but the moms need a lot of water. So I have it like looped around all the moms and then the tail end just goes out over there. So I'm not 100% happy with that setup, but that's the materials that I have right now. So that's what I'm gonna work with. And I can always change it. And if I need to add more drip line, then I can, but I don't know. I'm just gonna leave that for now and then see how that does. So now I have a huge mess to pick up and I still have thousands of irises to plant. But I think I'm gonna save that for a different day. I may record it, I may not, because it's gonna be the exact same process. Only thing that'll be different is the location of where I'm planting them. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.